coming up, an update on a stabbing case right here in Valdosta. And find out what is going on with gas prices in our area. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Mikhail Keyes. And I'm Lindsay Shaw. A verbal dispute led to the stabbing of a Valdosta man in front of his children this past Sunday. The Valdosta police were able to obtain information from witnesses and make an arrest. 42-year-old Delvis Dozer is in custody at the Lowndes County Jail and is charged with aggravated assault, possession of a knife during a commission of a crime, and with five counts of cruelty to children in the first degree. The victim was transported to a local hospital and is in stable condition. A Valdosta man has been indicted for a vehicle homicide in 2015 that killed two in Lowndes County. Jeremy Matt Carter was allegedly driving under the influence when the incident occurred. The Supreme Court of Lowndes County has charged him with homicide in the first degree, driving under the influence, reckless driving, open container and driving with a suspended license. Carter was driving a Ford F-150 when he attempted to overtake a school bus. His truck collided with the Ford Mustang and the driver Logan Shelley and passenger Kylie Neville both died at the accident. 26-year-old Thaddeus Marquise Robinson of Sanford, Florida, was taken into custody yesterday after leading police on a high-speed chase through South Georgia. At around 1 p.m., a Georgia State Patrol trooper clocked Robinson traveling at a speed of 75 miles per hour in a 55 miles per hour zone. The trooper pursued Robinson on Highway 135, reaching speeds up to 120 miles per hour. Eventually, the chase led to Highway 84 towards Valdosta, where the suspect crashed into a ditch. Robinson faces charges including driving on a suspended license and attempting to elude law enforcement. No injuries were reported at this time. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, find out about what Red Cross is doing to help those in need. And later, we'll tell you about a new app for VSD students. Stay with us. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Here, we are a community of 11,000 individual stories. A place where all doors are open. Your home away from home. Where you will make lifelong connections. And you will never feel invisible. Here, you will write it, research it, sing it, broadcast it, share it, serve it, teach it, nurture, and own it. VSU. Over 100 majors, championship athletics, and just far enough away from home. Find out what VSU can do for you. Welcome back to News Valdosta. The American Red Cross will host Giving Day on April 21st. The one-day event supports the Red Cross by accepting donations to help families who have been affected by disasters or emergencies. Each year, the Red Cross responds to over 66,000 disasters nationwide where families have lost everything. Over 2,500 of those disasters are, George, are in Georgia annually. For more information on Giving Day or how you can donate now, visit the Red Cross website. Locally, gas prices have jumped up 14 cents in only a week. The prices have stabilized, but they are still some of the highest we've seen this year. I got a chance to gather information about the price at the pumps. Not too long ago, gas prices were surprisingly low. Now, they have slowly but surely went back up to their usual prices. According to AAA's Daily Gauge Fuel Report, gas prices jumped 14 cents in one week. Um, gas prices go up in the summertime all the time. I think it's just something that we're used to. I don't really understand why they go up in the summer, but they do. And we just have to pay more for gas or we have to walk. My car only takes $26, so regardless, I'm pretty happy. I drive a four-cylinder. I don't really pay too much attention to gas prices because I know that I have to pay for gas. The average of price of gas in Lowndes County is $2. The increase is caused by the high demand of gas during the season, especially since the summer is coming. 
With families going on road trips, the gas prices may continue to rise. Gas prices are rising for the summer season. For News About Asa, my name is Mikhail Keyes. Recently, Lowndes County banned the sale of pets in local parking lots, and now many rescue organizations are asking the city of Valdosta to do the same. With the current setup, the county can issue citations to people selling the pets in parking lots, unless it is within the city limits. However, rescue organizations argue that it will still be too easy for breeders to just move to a different area within the city. The city is reviewing the county ordinance and will decide if they will change their laws in the future. The Hartsville-Jackson Atlanta International Airport has been named the busiest airport in the world. If you thought the security lines were already long, do not expect that to change anytime soon. The Atlanta airport welcomed more than 100 million passengers in 2015, making it the first and only airport to ever serve 100 million over the course of a year. Following the Atlanta airport for busiest is Beijing, China, with 90 million passengers. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we'll get today's weather report from Morgan B. Matthews. And later on, we'll update you on recent wins from VSU Sports, so stay with us. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast with Morgan B. Matthews. What should we expect, Morgan? Thanks, Lindsay. Well, happy Tuesday, South Georgia, and what a sunshiny day we've had thus far. With the high being 76 degrees and clear blue skies, there is no chance at all of rain, so the boots and coats can stay just where they are. Tonight, the temperatures will dip down to about 55 degrees and skies will still be clear. So stargazing with the kids or a loved one would be absolutely perfect this evening. Tomorrow's weather will be just as great as today, with the high being a mostly sunny 76 degrees with a 0% chance of rain. The UV index today is a 7 out of 10 on the UV point scale, which is high and needs to be taken into consideration for needed skin protection. Sunblock is recommended and with the UV index so high, it increases the chance of the sun damaging your skin so don't plan to be outside for an extended period of time. The pollen count today is a 10 on a 12-point scale. The top three pollens are oak, birch, and sweet gum. Being that the pollen is so high, those with allergies should definitely take allergy medicine or use a nasal spray before heading out. But the weather is looking superb for the next couple of days. Being that it is spring, the rain can and will creep back into the forecast. So enjoy the sun while it's out. That's all the weather I have for today. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, Morgan. When we come back, we'll take a look at what's going on in the sports world. So stay with us.
Welcome back to News Valdosta. VSU Sports has been on a winning streak as of late. We go to our very own Victoria Inman for more. Victoria? Thanks, Mikhail. The Valdosta State men's golf team played two amazing rounds of golf last night to open up the two-day Buccaneer Invitational in Miami. The Blazers teamed up for a round of 2 over 286 before following up with a 4 under 280 score in the second round. The score puts the Blazers in a tie with Central Missouri State and just six strokes behind number five, Lynn University, at the end of the first day. The team is finishing the tournament by competing against seven of the nation's top-rated teams today. In other golf news, a, a bad officer resident will be inducted into the African American Golf Hall of Fame this year. Addie Cobb will be inducted at the organization's 12th annual banquet on May 25th in West Palm Beach. She will be recognized for her dedication to the game for over 40 years and her countless wins in amateur tournaments. Cobb says she will always love the game of golf. Valdosta High School has announced its official partnering with Muscle Milk Collegiate. The Valdosta Touchdown Club invested in a year-long partnership that allows the boosters to purchase Muscle Milk powder formula at a reduced rate. Muscle Milk will also supply the Wildcats with t-shirts, sidelines, towels, and shaker bottles. One year, the agreement will cost the football program $30,000. Valdosta High School is one of the first high schools in the nation to partner with the company. The Atlanta Braves opened their final season at Turner Field Monday afternoon with a new lineup. The roster included four rookies. Nine of the 25 players wore a Brave uniforms for the first time in their career yesterday. Players John Gant and Drew Stubbs switched uniform numbers, and Stubbs joined the starting lineup only three days after signing with the Braves. Even though the team lost, the organization believes the changes will lead to the playoffs and eventually the championship. The Valdosta State women's tennis team dominated this weekend, winning five back-to-back -back matches in a GSC tournament. The Lady Blazers took on Delta State, Christian Brothers, West Georgia, North Alabama, and Mississippi College and kept the momentum going after each match. The, 10 is 10 and 6, the team is 10-6 for the season and 7-2 in the conference. They take on West Alabama Saturday at 2. The men's tennis team is no stranger to victory either. The Blazers won four back-to-back -back games this weekend as well. The men played Delta State, North Alabama, Christian Brothers, and Mississippi College to bring their record to 11-4 overall and 7-1 in the conference. Blazers play West Alabama Saturday at 2. Thanks, Victoria. We're going to take a short break, but next we'll catch up with a word about the new app created by VSU students. And find out how you can get involved in your local community. All this and more coming up on your News Valdosta. Stay with us. When every moment matters and a hand reaches out, when someone gives blood and a life is saved, that moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Every day the Red Cross responds to nearly 200 neighborhood emergencies and your support makes it possible. Use this moment to join us today. Visit redcross.org. Back with the news about Dasta. The VSU Theater and Dance Program is performing Oklahoma for the next two nights. Oklahoma is set in a western Indian territory in 1906 and tells the story of cowboy Curly McLean and his love for the farm girl Lori Williams. The shows start at 7.30 each night and is presented at the Sawyer Theater stage. Tickets may be reserved by calling the VSU Theater and Dance box office. VSU successfully completed its first color dash last weekend. I had the chance to catch up with the supporters this past Saturday. Saturday marked VSU's first ever Blaze the Trail color dash. The event was a 5K run to promote physical fitness and wellness as well as to raise money for autism. Um, the run itself was like a really cool experience. Uh, it was something that was different that I never really tried before. But, uh, you know, usually I run throughout the week or something like that, but this is different. I never run, ran this long and this far. During the run, participants went through four color checkpoints where colored powder was thrown on them. 
The idea came from a VSU organization called Model Mentors, who is dedicated to giving back to the community. A portion of the proceeds will go to Autism Awareness to help them get new books and materials for the children. Um, it costs $60,000 a year to um, help to maintain an autistic child, so we definitely wanted to help um, make that cause better. The month of April is Autism Awareness Month. A portion of the proceeds from the race will be given to a learning center in Valdosta that caters to autistic children. Despite the bad weather that we experienced today, the supporters came out and had a great time for a good cause. For News Valdosta, my name is Mikhail Keyes. VSU students are in the process of creating an app to make keeping up with the campus life a little bit easier. News Valdosta reporter Michaela Leone tells us more about it. Soon, VSU students will be able to keep up with upcoming events with an easy-to-use app. The app is called Breeze. Here, students can post upcoming events and those who have the app will be instantly notified. The app will be connected to Google Maps so you can see exactly where the event will be held. The idea from the app came from VSU students Terrence Johnson, Paige Cox, and Vincent Moore. It has a news feed. In the news feed, you able to, it's like a directory. So everybody at VSU, when they sign up, they'll be on the one directory, able to communicate with each other. Like, basically, it's like a Twitter, but it's based upon your university. You also will have an event feature, which will allow you to, which will allow organizations to post events and also allow students to pressure they're going to attend the event. If they're going to attend the event, it allows them to get notifications when that event about to start so we can get more awareness about events that's on campus. Students will also be able to interact with each other in the lobby feature where they will be able to post messages, pictures, and videos. The app will also include polls, forms, and a chance to take a look at what is going on on other campuses. A beta version for the app is expected to be released in late April. For News Valdosta, I'm Michaela Leung. That's it for our program today. Thank you for watching News Valdosta. I'm Mikhail Keys. And I'm Lindsay Shaw. Join us again tomorrow for more News Valdosta. Have a great day.